Hey Grinders, welcome back to Common Pitfalls, and I'm coming at you with an intermediate short, uh, which I call Milestone Number One. There are going to be three milestones in this series, and we've just covered the beginning pitfalls, as you'll be aware if you've been watching. If not, have a watch of it because you don't actually deserve to be here yet if you've not seen it. This is kind of a reward for people who have looked at these pitfalls and taken them on board and hopefully will be avoiding them and have dramatically increased their chances of making it to milestone number one, which is where we are moving beyond the initial stages of our poker career and toward the pre-intermediate to intermediate stages. Um, so, welcome to the first milestone. If you've learned about these pitfalls, you're now and how to deal with them and watch all the videos and put some thought into it. You're now in a much better situation to give yourself a real chance at success in this treacherous pit-filled realm of online poker in 2014. It's not an easy place to find success anymore. Um, it never really was, but for more people in the past it was possible. Than it is now. Um, now you've really got to work very hard, have a very good approach to learning, have a lot of time to put in, and do well basically in all sort of areas of poker, not just on the tables but off the tables, and have a good review strategy, incorporate new information well, and be highly motivated, and all these things. So if you've avoided all the pitfalls before, which were sort of which equated to sort of avoiding a lack of motivation, avoiding going off the rails in one direction or another, then you've done very, very well. You should give yourself a big pat on the back. If you've made it, if you are a new grinder who's ground their way from 5 nl to 25 no limit or something like that, although you've only beaten two low stakes, you've done really well because you've beaten all the other regs in your games and beaten them badly enough um, so that you've still profited after rake and you've built a bankroll and you should be very proud of yourself because you're in a minority now. Um, I'm not putting this statistic up to scare you guys, and it's by no means an official statistic from a reliable empirical so source with lots and lots of samples, but what it is, is my estimation based on the last few years of me um, seeing people in the poker community and watching them fail and stuff. I would say that people who are being coached have a much higher success rate than this, but still, you'd be you'd be surprised, even people who I, th I think I'm a fairly good poker coach um, for these stakes, having done it for a long time now and sort of worked on my methods for a long time. And although I've been having more success with people, I still find that there are many, many people who do still go off the rails despite my best efforts. And, you know, not everyone makes it, but those in the community who aren't getting coached, the su success rate is even lower. You're talking like, I would say 20% is optimistic here, um, maybe even less, but I'd say 20% of people on average are going to make it, um, that includes people who are being coached, people who aren't being coached, of course most people don't have a coach, so um, most of this sample is just people on the site watching videos um, or on other poker sites and forums and trying to learn poker in many ways across the world, but most of them are just not going to make it. Um, they've not jumped over the eight pits, they've fallen victim to one or more of these pitfalls or possibly to other pitfalls that aren't even included in this series because I didn't feel that I could cover absolutely all of them. I just tried to cover the main ones where people tend to go off the rails um, the most frequently. So you've made it, if you've digested these pitfalls, you're in a very good place to make it to 25 NL provided that you've got some natural ability and some logical um, thinking qualities and have the problem solving sort of analytical mindset to be fairly good at poker then you're definitely in a very good situation. Um, if you are one of the people who has actually made it through a few stakes and progressed these days, a few stakes up the ranking then very well done, you're in a minority, you've made out of your poker infancy alive, congratulations let's go forward and look at the next sort of treacherous terrain that you're going to have to navigate if you're going to go any further. So yeah, this sounds a bit cynical, like haha, poker's so hard that like you're never going to get anywhere. That's not what it is, but I want to motivate people. This is what I like to do in teaching English as well. I like to motivate people by kind of scaring them a little bit by saying most people fail or look, this is how hard the exam is. This is what you're going to have to do in three months. You better work. In poker, it's the same. You're going to have to do 
you're going to have to be special to succeed because you're going to have to have a better work ethic, you're going to have to avoid all these pitfalls, you're going to have to have a better approach to learning and you're going to have to just do a lot better than the majority of people who try and do what you're doing right now. So be aware that what you're doing is no easy task and if you do have success it's something to be very proud of and also something to that you should know doesn't guarantee you success in the next stage or far from it but it does put you in a good position if you've avoided these initial pitfalls so milestone one congratulations we're here what are we going to do now well 25 nl is awaiting or whatever this is just roughly it could be 25 50 you've made some progress basically you've beat a few stakes at the lower end of the micros um, so it's time to start learning some more concepts while still working on your leaks it's time to keep respecting that old inchworm and make sure that you're learning new material as much as you are working on your game at the back and making sure that everything is well oiled and up to scratch and you aren't developing any major holes that are going to bring down your game in a few weeks or months time or whatever. So we are going to need to incorporate some new material, you're going to be facing more aggression. This is what always happens when we hit a milestone, we move up, we look forward and see that the regs in our new game are crazy and they're all 3 betting like 60% more often than the ones at 10 and L were or whatever. Um, yeah, okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to have to learn a few more things, a bit more advanced preflop strategy perhaps, a bit more about aggressive lines and when they're good, a little bit more about balance perhaps, and do some more work in your hand reading to get a better feel for what ranges are like in certain spots, and yeah, put a lot more work into your, your poker thought process and keep your work ethic high. Um, but as we take in all this new information, firstly we need to make sure we're not neglecting the old stuff and we still keep that well oiled, but secondly we need to make sure that we're not going to over apply new concepts that we learn, that's to say we're not going to start applying them to spots where they're not really applicable. This is a very very common pitfall and that's why it deserves its own category, over application. Sometimes I'll make a video and afterwards one of my students will come to me and say, oh yeah, nice video, by the way, check this spot out where I used your Super Mega Ultra 7-bet cannon. And I'll say, man, you can't just use the Super Mega Ultra 7-bet cannon in that spot because none of these factors are present. This is just, like, really bad. And then my student will say, well, I just did it because I thought it looked kind of similar and I thought it was cool. So, yeah, crazy, ridiculous, over um, exaggeration of an example. But, yeah, this does happen. Not with crazy 7-bet cannons, but with many, many concepts. Just more, as you learn more aggressive lines, it's very easy to sort of want to be all super lag all the time and never have a fold button. That's going to be one of the main pitfalls, like the lack of the fold button or the fold button sort of disintegrating um, because it's a new stake and you just don't want to be scared money and you want to show that you're man enough for it and you sort of step up and overcompensate a little bit um, by over applying the aggressive lines that you learn or whatever. And then on the other side of the coin, um, we need to be careful that we don't underapply stuff that really is important, um, such as how to form. A lot of people just have no strategy pre-flop. They move up to like 50 no limit, where there's a lot of sort of three bet, four bet meta gaming going on, and they don't have a strategy of how they're going to play against the most common player types in their game. Which I think these days, when you're playing sort of 50, 100 no limit, is just kind of crazy. Like you need to have some kind of idea of why your strategy is what it is. You can't just 3-bet a hand because, oh hey, this hand, I don't really want to flat it and I haven't 3-bet in a while, so I'll 3-bet it. I mean, this thinking's very much from years gone by. You want to have an idea of what your strategy should be and how you should be playing these very common spots that come up all the time. That's why I made that series, but what's your range? So you can think about your actual strategy with your whole range and not just what you're going to do in every single situation. because. Okay, that's one example of under-application. It's amazing how many people manage to get quite far without having a solid idea of what kind of range is good to play in a certain very common spot. So you definitely want to do some work on that. That's just one example, though. There are other examples of things I think people under-apply. They tend to favour the crazy aggro plays or the fun lines or the, the new exciting things that they're learning, and they kind of neglect having a solid um, strategy in lots of different spots, one being, like I just said, um, pre-flop 3-bet, 4-bet kind of spots and things like that, but also just how much they're defending their blinds to different open sizes, what open sizes they're using in different situations, what c-bet size they use in certain situations, very common spots that come up all the time that are just completely, um, the concepts of which are just completely under-applied in favour of these more sort of dramatic, exciting um, kind of materials that people like to learn. So that's something to definitely be very wary of 
and we're going to be talking in the next four episodes that's the thing about a milestone we look forward and we, we look back at what we've just accomplished and we look forward to what we need to accomplish now so now it's time to start really you've fixed enough of your leaks you've got enough fundamentals to go forward you need to start incorporating a bit more stuff fine feed the end the head of the worm but do it sensibly and when you learn a new concept try and apply it and check with your poker friends and coach or whatever and on grinder school seek advice am i applying this correctly is this what you meant by x concept or y concept if you watch like a pocket air video or something just for instance and there's a concept about um range versus range are you applying that properly or are you applying it in a spot where there are other things that you should think about instead for instance that's just one example of what could happen um but yeah you need to make sure that when you learn a new concept from an instructor then you check with people that you're using it correctly you practice using it a lot before you sort of assume that it's knowledge and swallow it right down to the core of your game experiment in that period where you've just learned something and make sure you swallow it down correctly in digestible chunks and don't just choke to death on some by over applying some new concept or whatever um so yeah um here's another kind of fact for you that I've learned from experience, most 25 NL regs won't make it to 50 NL as winning players. Of course they won't. And um, the thing is the games get a lot harder. Poker's a filtering process. Only the best and the purest of the poker players make it to the top or anywhere near the top these days. Which is why most 20 most 5 NL regs don't make it to 10 NL, most 10 NL regs don't make it to 25 NL, most 25 NL regs don't make it to 50 NL. This is just kind of the way it is these days. It's very hard in 6 max online poker. Um, that said, you've made it this far, um, you've already come far enough to get out of your poker infancy, make it to 25 NL, um, beat 5 NL, beat 10 NL, maybe even beat 2 NL if you started there, I don't know, but you've definitely shown that you've got some good fundamentals and you've learned enough to get this far and you've avoided those 8 pitfalls that I've discussed earlier probably, or you probably wouldn't have made it this far, or at least you've avoided many of them, you've not succumbed to all of them at least, or you definitely not have made it this far. So, well done, but now we can look forward. Um, most players will not make it to 50 NL, but you might do. You've already come this far, you've already defied the odds once, why can't you do it again? Of course you can. Just make sure that you're not succumbing to any pitfalls, make sure you're incorporating new information in a good way. Um, and then you could make it to 100 NL, of course, most 50 NL regs will get stuck there. They will not make it to 100, but you could. You could go, the sky's the limit. But you need to stay very, very motivated and stay ahead of the field, which means having an exceptional level of dedication to improving, going about it in a very sensible and organized way, and developing your poker talent as much as you can and staying as motivated and inspired as you can as well. We look forward in this milestone to a bright future, hopefully, of playing higher stakes. Keep the inspiration up. Keep going. Don't get disheartened if you hit a downswing at that new stake. Do not drop off the radar just because you had a bad month keep going you can do it but you're going to need to be exceptional but you can be exceptional you just have to work harder than everyone else and avoid the pitfalls and it shouldn't be that difficult because everyone falls into pitfalls pretty easily and stops working hard when things go wrong myself included i've done that been there um been there done that as i should i should probably say so yeah make sure that you are staying highly motivated to learn and look forward more pitfalls do await, more complex ones, more subtle ones, ones that many of your fellow regs are going to fall victim to. But don't be that guy. Try and make it. Be dedicated and, you know, stay stay really motivated even when times are bad, like we discussed before with understanding variance and all that kind of thing and having a non-results orientated approach to learning and not having your motivation depend on how well you're doing that month. Or whatever so we're going to talk more about how to incorporate new ideas soon how to avoid the pitfalls of over and under applying certain things over applying things that might not be as applicable as you think to all spots and under applying things that are really applicable to all spots but you've just not thought about it enough so yeah that's to follow should be good and then after that we're going to talk about pitfalls of a more intermediate player someone playing sort of 50 100 nl pitfalls are more related to the actual game itself and to poker kind of strategies what tends to go wrong what parts of the game break down what happens why do people most people at 25 and i'll not make it to 50 why do most people at 50 not make it to 100 
if we can crack that then there's hope so basically this milestone is here for me to scare you guys a little bit into working hard show you what's to come in the series and hopefully motivate you as well into being exceptional and being a success because i hope you are um okay i'll see you guys soon when we go on to full length episode eight and start talking about over application so that'll be fun um and stay with me in this series thanks for watching see you next time